Good morning, students. So this experiment is helium neon laser cavity and its properties. So here is the cavity. So distal tube we can see here. So is it visible? Yes. Yes. So you can see the distal tube here and the mirror is attached to this setup here in the back side of the distal tube and it is covered. So I have to uncover it very gently. So this is this cover is for uh, to make the cavity dust free. So here you can see a mirror. Here you can see the mirror. Okay. So a curved mirror is there, and here also a cover is to make that uh, setup dust free. So I have to remove it very gently. So this mirror is uh, M1, mirror one, and here is the separate mirror. It is M2, mirror two. So we can move this mirror and adjust the alignment so that the lasing beam generates. So now, so now we switch on this so it is the key is in zero and we have to place it in one position so it will be on here and uh, it is connected the high voltage is uh, is applied in this here and here okay so after putting it in one position high voltage is applied and the Cavity is now you can see the light, right? The distance has started, right? Can you see the? Yes, sir. Okay. And we have to align it. We have to align it so that this mirror from M1 and M2. It get uh, it is in the it is actually should be the exactly collinear so that it can reflect to and fro uh, multiple times. Okay, now we have uh, already set up for this position, and here you can see that laser beam is uh, generated through is. Okay, so you can see this. You can see the laser light here, right? Yes. Sir. Uh, through this, because there is dust, you can see the line also. You can see the line of the laser also through this dust. So uh, through dust, the beam is actually scattered and we can see the lines of the beam. Okay. So here I am just uh, blocking the light to the mirror and you can see the laser laser light is not is not now is not present here right so now it is again on right so uh, this portion is very uh, difficult and it takes time so uh, already we have done for this position but it should be for linear throughout the throughout the bench throughout the at least 45 centimeter because the radius of curvature of the mirror two is 45 centimeter right so the distance from m1 the m1 is is at position zero in the uh, optical bench and now it, uh, the position of the uh, m2 is uh, 36 here okay so it is not visible due to the lack of uh, light so the distance between M1 and M2, so it is in 36.5 uh, rather. Okay, so the uh, distance of the M1 and M2 is now 36.5. So we can move this mirror 
and at least up to 45 cm the distance d small d is the distance between m1 and m2 so small d uh, up to 45 it should be collinear okay now if i move here I'm moving the I'm moving the mirror to M2 and you can see that in between the positions the lasing is not happening and at a particular position at, at some range the raising is uh, the laser is produced okay so is it visible so up to 45 cm uh, the laser beam should uh, uh, the lasing operation should be uh, we should get but here we are not getting because it is not the collinearly aligned okay so it will it will take time sometimes you uh, it will come here so you can adjust the uh, alignment throughout the 45 or 50 cm okay now here uh, the first part is the uh, first part is the uh, to find the condition to find the conditions of the Uh, to find conditions of the distance of between m1 and m2 that is small d no now and uh, uh, by changing the position of m2 you will have to measure the power of the laser beam okay so if it is collinear throughout uh, at least 50 cm 45 50 cm then you can you will see that the uh, up to uh, up to 45 the lasing beam will uh, occur and beyond this the the lasing beam will not occur and the power will be dropped okay so it is the it is the power meter so by choosing a particular range we can have the power of this laser of this any light actually so we will measure through this okay uh, we can directly uh, we can directly put here now actually it is showing 19.19 uh, 19.03 microwatt okay so it is the power so we can uh, measure the powers through by changing this uh, uh, positions of the m2 okay so this is the first part Now second to study the transverse modes. Okay, so we'll have to use the we'll have to use the camera. This is the camera, and it should be connected to a PC. Okay, so we'll use the laptop here. and there is a software there is a software view play cap so it will it will show the videos now we will uh, incident the, the the laser beam which has been produced it should be the camera okay and we will see how the modes are let like so here we are pressing here we are pressing the camera
where we are placing the camera and will the light should be incident on the directly to the camera and here we can see the mouse mouse is visible yes sir yes sir now, uh, now we have to uh, move the screws here the screw two screws are there in m2 two screws are there in m2 you can see you can see the two screws are there so we have to adjust it to get the different modes but we will not do here because if the alignment has gone so it will take time okay uh, for the time being we will not move it so we will uh, concentrate on the on the modes which have been uh, received here okay so here we can capture the modes and it uh, it may be actually to some extent it can be better Can adjust the cameras so that we can get a better picture of this mode. Okay, so here we can see the mode. So from there uh, we can capture it. Okay. So it will uh, capture the video. And we can also capture the still photographs. Okay, by snapshot. Okay, so we'll uh, use another software. So that will be uh, demonstrated later. So we'll use another software to measure the intensity profile with the uh, distance and how to measure the distance from that software. The, the software is ImageJ. So it will be uh, described later. Okay. So up to now, uh, any confusion? Any confusion up to now? Now we'll move to the uh, third part of the experiment. So that is uh, to study the laser which has been produced here uh, with the polarization polar, the polarization effect of the laser okay so we'll place a polarizer here and measure the power and and we'll see how it is changing with the polarizer Moving the camera. Here is the polarizer. Here is the polarizer. So we'll place it. We'll place it here. To the middle. To the center of the polarizer, will uh, the light, the beam should be incident. Okay. So it is coming through the polarizer. So it it is incident at uh, in the center, right? So now we will use this. Now we use this to measure the power. Now 
to place the probe here. And tight it up. And the beam should incident on the probe in the center of the probe. So it is on the center, right? Okay. Now here we can measure the amount to this power meter. Okay. So now it is showing actually 33.13.14. Right. So now we'll change the angle of the polarizer. Angle of the polarizer, and we'll see how it is changing. Okay. Now, uh, now it is 38.14, and we are moving the we are moving it. We are moving it. And now, uh, now the angle is. Uh, now the angle is. Uh, 50 right angle, angle is 50 and the and the light is it is incident on this is 18 point so it is fluctuating between 18.93 and 19 19.01 okay so the, the actually the intensity uh, the power has has been reduced okay so now further if we move it now we can see the value is 1.03 microwatt okay 1.03 microwatt so it is in the nine it is the, the angle is now 90 degree okay so here we are uh, moving the angles of the polarizer now it is 90 degree and the uh, value is actually the minimum okay the power is minimum now and further if we change it and we'll uh, reduce the angle so angle of the polarization and the value is increasing actually okay now the angle is about actually to demonstrate the uh, optics experiment is very difficult so the angle is now 60 and the value is 12.48 uh, 12 micro uh, micro watt okay and if we move further so it will it is increasing you can see it is increasing it is now 29 and we increase further so it has become 33 and angle is at about 10 degree now it is in 0 degree and you can see it is 36.57 microwatt if we rotate it further so it will again it will again increase uh, decrease the value of the power It is decreasing. The power is decreasing. It is 22. If we rotate further, it is 15 uh, at the angle of at the angle of 310. Okay. So this is the effect of the polarization with the laser. Okay. So don't forget to switch it off because it will the battery will be off otherwise. So this is the polarization effect of the laser beam. Now uh, we will measure the wavelength of the laser beam okay so we'll in the spectrometer here
so this is the spectrometer this is the spectrometer and the spectrometer should be connected with the pc to this cable and uh, the power is to the to this adapter okay now it is connected to the main line and here is the optical fiber so through optical fiber the uh, the laser will come to the spectrometer and it will measure the uh, it will show the spectrum and the uh, corresponding wavelength of the spectrum so this is uh, this optical fiber we should rotate in a unit direction so we cannot rotate in the other way otherwise okay so here is the cap so we will remove the cap and it is uh, connected <laughs> here this is one end of the optical fiber and the other optical fiber it should receive the laser so now we will connect uh, we will switch on the spectrometer so here it is connected so spectro software will open be patient it is taking time so uh, it is open now so the laser beam on the one part so you can see the spectrum you can see the spectrum is it visible is it visible now here you can see the spectrum that is uh, between 600 and 650 this is actually the measure measurement of wavelength is it visible the sir the screen is not in focus now it now it it is in focus yes sir so you can see that the spectrum is in between 600 and 650 so it is about 632 right uh, it is about have to be about 
Now, uh, uh, it is uh, the experimental part is done now. So uh, we'll use another software here, as we have mentioned, image J and uh, so that your next task will be to measure the intensity profile of uh, TM00 mode of this laser. So here you will see the mode of laser. This is not TM00 mode. This is actually TM12 mode. How you uh, recognize it as uh, the because standard the standard uh, definition is TM in index. This is X and Y and the value of X is how many mode in X direction and Y is the index of how many mode in one uh, Y direction. Now here you can see that in case if we go vertically, this is Y direction. There is here is one node and here uh, there is uh, another node, second node. So in Y there is a uh, two node and in X there is only uh, one node in between the center. So it is basically TM12 mode. Now, as we uh, still not capture uh, a good picture of TM00 mode, I will show you the intensity, how to measure the intensity profile in TM12 mode. It is not perfectly Gaussian, but uh, if we measure it in TM00 mode, it should be perfect Gaussian. So to measure, first you have to open the image software. This is a open source software. You can easily uh, can download this software from internet so this is the image software now to open the image in image software you just have to drag the uh, image to the software So here the image, I just drag it to the software. Now you have to set up your setting to measure the intensity. So to do first, you have to go analyze and then you have to go on set measurement. So first analyze, then uh, you have to go set measurement and you have to click on the set measurement button. Here you can see there will be automatically selected three options that area, mean and max get a value and mean get a value. You have to opt this area and mean and max get a value. So is it visible? The options are visible. Yes, sir. Uh, so you have to just uh, click on this mean get a value option and then you have to click OK. Now to measure the intensity of each point, you have to click on this point button. You have to select this uh, point option. Then you have to come each point of the image of which you want to measure the intensity. I just uh, showing you uh, one. This is a 
I just showing for this one. Okay, so I have to start uh, to extract point from here. So if I click on, this is uh, I I take already one point, and you have to go linearly along x direction to capture each point. So I take already two point, three point, four point, five point, six point. So according to you have to go along x axis and for efficient result you have to take more point as much more point you take your result will be that much better now for demonstrated purpose we don't take more point because it take time so as much point i take now to So the value of this point, uh, intensity of this point, we have to again go to analyze. Is it visible? Analyze. Okay. Then you have to just click on the measure button, and you can see there will be a list of each point. That is, see the list of each point that according to there is three option. One, one is uh, mean. One is mean, and there is a x, and there is another uh, column is y. So as we go along the x-axis, the value of x will be changed, and we don't move uh, much in y direction. So the value of y will be the same. Now, according to uh, x-axis uh, corresponding to each point, this mean is given the intensity value. So for the pixel x equal to 140, the intensity value will be seven, and for x Uh, for the pixel of x equal to 165, the in intensity is 11. So as you go along x-axis, you can see that the intensity is uh, uh, increasing rapidly. This is uh, have to a Gaussian function for TM000 mode, but as we don't take it in uh, TM00 mode, so it will be uh, look like Gaussian, but not perfectly Gaussian. Now you can also plot this graph uh, uh, in uh, laptop also. To do, you have to select all the point. So first, I select all the point. Then you have to go the result. Result. Now, after clicking on result, you can see option like plot. Is it visible? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Now you have to click on plot. Then you can get a graph, but you have to change as. Uh, we want to put our intensity in y axis so as i say that the intensity is a mean follow mean and along x axis we have to put the value of uh, x coordinate so now it is uh, uh, the setting is okay now we have to click on the okay button now you see the graph now see here the intensity is along x axis is starting from here and goes up up and then after uh, a particular direction is again goes down so if we measure this for tm00 mode it will be come perfectly gaussian uh, uh, but here is not uh, coming perfectly gaussian so as it is not tm00 mode and now you have to draw a average uh, uh, line uh, you have to draw a line which will give a average value it is not necessary to connect is the point for uh, for eliminate uh, necessary error you have to just draw a average uh, average line along this then it will be give a gaussian value okay then uh, for this experiment uh, the data will not be given the picture of this modes will be given and uh, you have to uh, Analyze it uh, uh, as per the as per you told here. Okay, how to use the uh, software? So you have to use the software image J I M A G E J. So you have to use the software and analyze the TM mode, and you have to make a report uh, uh, on throughout the experiment. Okay, from uh, how to uh, uh, how to get the lasing beam. The every part you have to make a. a uh, report on it and uh, the data will not be separately provided only the photo of the 
the snapshot of the mode will be provided. Okay. So you have to analyze the modes and you have to make a report on how uh, the polarization effect you have you have already seen in this uh, experiment and how uh, the, uh, the stability factor is coming. Okay. So you have to make a report on this. So no separate data will be provided. And if you are able to find the image software in uh, internet, then you just ask in WhatsApp, we will provide the zip file of this software. So any question? Any confusion regarding the uh, report? Okay. Then uh, we are closing the session. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir.